Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I go birding in Southwest Utah. This is actually the first time for me birding in this region of Utah, and I'm super excited to show you the species that I saw and take you along for the adventure. Let's get into the first hotspot. Good morning, everyone. Today is the start of the Southwest birding adventures. I'm really excited because I've never birded in Southwest Utah, so there's a potential for so many lifers. I'm here in Cedar City. I stopped at this pond by the aquatic center because pinion jays were reported here recently. Fortunately, I did not see any pinion jays, but I picked up my lifer bufflehead among some other cool birds. I'm gonna show you that now. Just to give you a little more information about this trip, of course it's really exciting to be birding in southwest Utah for the first time, but I'm also trying to complete the Birds of Utah challenge I've been doing this whole year where I'm trying to see every single bird in the field guide I have, Birds of Utah by Stan Tequilia. There are a few species on that list that are only found down south, and especially at this point of the year, many of them have migrated farther south. So I'm targeting four this weekend. Firstly, we have the bush tit, then gambles quail, third canyon wren. I have actually heard canyon wren, but I haven't actually seen any of them, so I haven't counted it yet. And then lastly, pinion jay. Pinion jay I think is going to be the hardest out of all of them. They are hard to locate, but when you do locate them it should be easy because they're social birds and they travel in flocks. That's why I'm here at this pond. There's 40 of them spotted two days ago, but Unfortunately, it's snowed and it's really cold now and I think they moved on somewhere else. Regardless though, this is going to be a sweet adventure. I think I'm going to split it into two videos, one from all the hot spots I hit today and one from the hot spots I hit tomorrow. So make sure, of course, you subscribe so you don't miss the second one. But let's travel to our next location. For the next hotspot quick challenge update, I was sitting at 123 species. However, unfortunately, a bird I called a blue wing teal in the last video is probably a female cinnamon teal. Thank you all of you who left a comment and let me know this. I agree with you. But we're not going to take away one from the challenge yet because recently I went birding and didn't make a video. Firstly, I saw a female Williamson sapsucker. That's just extra proof that I did see one because I didn't get footage before. But secondly, I caught a northern mockingbird too. So that one does count toward the challenge. We lost one, but we gained another. Still at 123. I'm at the second location now. We are walking along the river that feeds into Quail Creek just because there's so many trees here. I'm hoping I can spot a bush tit. That's the real target species right now.
Let's go, let's go. Two birds off the list. You just saw me chasing around that group of bush tit. They were hard to film in the trees, but I think I got some good shots of them. I got a very brief look at a canyon wren too. Two more challenge birds. Let's go. And on top of that, the bush tit itself was a lifer. I saw a verdin as well, which is another lifer for me. Wow, this birding trip's off to a hot start. While the river and the trees was treating us really well, I wanted to move more towards the reservoir to check if there were any birds out in the water at Quail Creek State Park. I came across a raft of, I think I counted 53 ruddy duck, both female and male. So that was really cool. Beautiful stop at Quail Creek. Two target species remaining, pinion jay, gambles quail. We are gonna leave this area now and I think I'm gonna head over to Lytle Ranch. I don't know if that's really the best spot for gambles quail or pinion jay. They have been spotted around there, but it's just a really cool birding area from what I've heard that I've never been to. So I wanted to get there regardless. So let's head to basically almost the Western border of Utah and go check out Lytle Ranch. On the way to Lytle Ranch, I decided to hit up an eBird hotspot called the Welcome Spring. Not knowing much about the area, I stopped and saw the trees along here. Expecting there to be water at the top, I started to hike along this beautiful desert region. This is certainly a different habitat than what we were birding before. It's desert out here. I'm excited. That means there hopefully should be some new types of species. So on the way to Lytle Ranch, I'm stopping at the Welcome Spring area. I'm walking towards the spring now, hoping there'd be some birds around the area. I'm assuming spring means water, so that would be good for them to drink out here in the desert. But we'll see what we find out here. Not a whole lot going on here in this area. There is some good vegetation that's different from the rest of the desert, so I could see some bird species around here and why they would like this area. But I'm seeing basically what I saw this morning. I just caught a kinglet on camera. There's a canyon run again hopping around, but he is not presenting himself for some good shots, that's for sure. So I think I'm gonna head back to the car and then we're gonna go to spend most of the rest of the day at Lytle Ranch. I said I'd move on to the next hotspot, but I was quickly distracted by a drumming noise I was hearing. I spent a little bit looking up into the tree and then finally got eyes on a red nape sapsucker. This wasn't the only one around, there was actually a few. I counted about three or four in the area. 
So of course I had to spend some time watching them and just observing the behavior, trying to get some good footage too, because I love woodpeckers. They're some of the coolest birds, I think. It's always a treat to see. Then I finally did get this canyon wren to present instead of hiding away in this log that he was so tucked away in. Well, I just got to Lytle Ranch and I am starving. It's about 1 p.m. It's been a pretty good day of birding so far, but I'm gonna get some lunch going, classic camping style food. If you didn't know, on top of birding, I'm also really big into camping and car camping, so I usually always have the gear with me to be able to make a quick lunch on the go. I grabbed one of those cheap tuna packets, ate that, and then had some mac and cheese that I made in my backpacking stove. A yellow rumped warbler looked on as I enjoyed my lunch, all right, just finished up my lunch. We are gonna explore the Lytle Ranch Preserve now. This area is owned by BYU, Brigham Young University, in Provo, Utah, but of course I'm down here in Southwest Utah. So they have this remote preserve that they maintain. If you ever come here, just know you have to sign a waiver online and then there's a on-site manager that you're supposed to contact. I called, but they didn't answer. So I left them a voicemail just letting them know I was gonna be birding in the area. I hope that's sufficient enough. I think I'm complying with all the rules, but so I'm excited. This is one of the premier areas in the southwest Utah region because it's an oasis in the middle of the desert. There's all kinds of trees and stuff around here, which was not what I was driving through on the way in. So yeah, let's go find some birds. Might be looking in the wrong spots, but I expected there to be a lot more birds around. I've really only seen a bunch of ravens in the sky and then some white crowned sparrows in that orchard behind me. I did get a quick glimpse of a cooper's hawk flying into that orchard too, but I couldn't relocate it. So that was cool, but overall not as many birds as I expected to see. I'm gonna keep looking around though. Maybe I'll find some more. Let's go, lifer, greater roadrunner. Really happy about that one. Shout out to Jordan from Bright Eyed Birding. I'm wearing his hat right now. Imbued some of his luck to get his favorite bird on camera and onto my life list. Well, not much has happened since that roadrunner, so I'm gonna turn back and probably head back towards St. George. A little disappointed, I thought there'd be a lot more species out here. I've heard a lot about this place, but it's probably because it's like 3.40 right now and the time of year maybe too leads towards there not being as many species around. That's okay though. Got to check out this preserve for the very first time. Might make a trek back here another time with some other people too, who knows? I'll let you know if I see any species on the way back to the car though. While Lyle Ranch didn't produce exactly what I was hoping for, it was still cool to check out the area. And then on the road out, I did pick up my third of the challenge birds. We got a Gamble's quail. There was a flock of about 18 of them. I only got footage of this one. Then I saw a cactus wren hopping around, so another bird added on to my life list. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me at all. It is so windy. But I'm at Fire Lake State Park or Ivan's Reservoir, Ivan's Reservoir, whatever it is. This is my last stop of the day though, so we're gonna walk around this reservoir. 
Screw it, I'm just gonna do a voiceover. I'm honestly impressed with how much wind noise my mic cut out. It was gusting. You could see the birds just bracing themselves against the wind here too. Regardless, I was glad to be at Ivan's Reservoir. It was a really, really pretty area with a beautiful rocky backdrop. So I started my hike around, and these are some of the birds that I saw. The sun set over a reservoir and it set on another great day of birding. I headed to a nearby area to camp for the night. This wasn't the end of the Southwest Utah birding adventures, however. Make sure to subscribe because you're not going to want to miss my adventures at Sand Hollow and the St. George area in my next video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.